welcome to week four, lesson one, or 4A. Um, we're gonna go over a couple more trig questions as we review for the end of your pre-cal final potential. All right, so evaluate the trigonometric function using its period as an aid. That seems like a complicated statement. The only thing I really need to focus on is evaluate the trigonometric function. So basically solve sine of 14 pi over three. Well, that's a little difficult because 14 pi over three doesn't live on the unit circle, does it, right? If I go around and I said that this was zero over three, this is three over three, and this is six over three, right? Because if I come back around and it's a circle, it's gonna continue going on. Well, let's try zero, three, six. Uh, let's keep on going. Nine, 12, and look at that. I am now not even, two circles hasn't gotten us to 14 pi over three. So we would have to keep on going uh, three, six, nine, 12, 15 would be our next one. So obviously I've gone around zero, three. Ooh, that's a crazy looking circle to start with. Let's try that again. Zero, three, six, nine, 12. And so 14 is probably somewhere right here. Well, now I know that I'm probably in quadrant two. And so that's going to help me solve it, right? Because I could solve sine ah, of pi over three in quadrant two. That's what we're going to do. But let's prove it to ourselves one more time. If the visualization isn't helping you, you might just want the pure math, especially because the visualization is great. But what if this was in 14? What if this was like 214? You really want to sit there and go 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, all the way to 214? That just seems like chaos. So let's actually use the period as an aid. And that's really simple because to get the period as an aid, I go to the denominator of my radian and I multiply by 2. And so that's going to be my numerator. So 6 pi over three would be one full revolution. If you don't believe me, go back to that unit quadrant one more time. Zero, three, six, that would be a full rotation, six pi over three. So six pi over three is my full period, my full rotation of sine in this particular radian format. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, there's that same information, I'm gonna take 14 pi over three, and I'm gonna take away by six pi over three until I get to a good value. If it was a really big number, like 214, instead of subtracting by six each time, I would divide by six, look at the first whole number and go from there, okay? And uh, for those of you who are like super confused about that, I can show that to you using 14. So here's 14 pi over 6 minus 6 pi over 3. Got me 8 pi over 3. Again, 8 is still significantly bigger than 6, so it's still too high. So I'm going to do it one more time. And now we're on 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is on our typical unit circle, so we can continue to solve. To go back to, hey, Miss Jag, you talked about dividing and you're subtracting. I'm still confused. Let's try that one more time. So if I took 14 and I divided by 6, how many times does 6 go into 14? Well, it goes in twice, and I have some sort of remainder left over. That remainder is kind of important. In fact, it's super important if you notice this number over here. And so I know that I went in two full rotations, and I'm left over with 2. Put it over the denominator, and you have your end answer, 2 pi over 3. So let's try that with a higher number. Just We'll just pick a random number. Let's try 30. Uh, one. Let's just try 31. Divide by three, and um, 31 goes in 10 times, and that means I'm left with 30 and then one. I'm left with one. So that means I'm potentially making 10 full rotations, and I'm left over with one pi over three. Let's prove that to ourselves using our visualization or our subtraction, just to prove to you that division also works. So if I went here, this is zero, three, six, nine. 12, 15, 18, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 21, 24, 27, 30. So there's my rotations. And if you can count them, it's, they're terrible in there, I know. And then 31 would be right here. Look at that. Full rotations. And there is my, um, what's it called? my additional one third. So you can prove it to yourself one of two ways. Let's continue on. Now that we've got to two pi over three, all I know is that we're in the traditional unit circle. So I go ahead and look at two pi over three and I look at that coordinate point, 
or if you're using hand tricks or anything like that, great. But I'm going to go ahead and look at that coordinate point, uh, negative one half squared of three over two, because you have access to a computer, which means you can Google your unit circle. All right. So cosine is X and sine is Y. So I'm looking for sine. So sine of two pi over three is just going to be the Y answer, square root of three over two. There was a long explanation for a single question, and that's just because I wanted to make sure you felt comfortable. But let's do it a couple more times. So if I have cosine of negative 19 pi over 6, the first thing I want to do is get negative 19 pi over 6 on my unit circle. So I subtract and subtract and subtract until I get to 5 pi over 6. Technically, we're adding because it's already negative, so we're technically adding. So we end up with 5 pi over 6. This information right here represents... Um, Where'd my pen go? This information right here is extraneous information for this particular question. It's trying to set it up in a more standard trigonometric function formula. That's what this is doing. But if I just focus on cosine of pi over six, I can go ahead and solve my question. So I either go to my hand trick for pi over six, my chart looking at pi over six, or I go to my unit circle or first quadrant. So I figure out my uh, x value at cosine of pi over six, and that was negative square root of three over two. If I had to use my hand, the other thing I would have to know is, uh, so if I'm using my pi over six and I figure out cosine is the bottom, nope, sine is the bottom, cosine is the top. What did I do wrong here? Oh, Miss Jag, I'm looking at the wrong finger. Pi over six, sorry about that. Okay, pi over six. So what happens when you're trying to look at a camera, do stuff with your hand, it gets a little chaosy. So pi over six, right, because 30 degrees is pi over six. Three on top. Well, right now we're at the square root of three over two, and you might be asking where that negative came from. I have to remind myself that five pi over six is somewhere over here. That's quadrant two. And if all students take calculus, the only thing that can be positive in quadrant two is sine. Therefore, cosine must be negative. Let's look at question 14. All right, tan of 11 pi over six. The first thing I ask myself is, is it on the unit circle? It is, so we don't have to readjust it like the last two questions. We know that we're in quadrant four and we have an XY coordinate point of square root of three over two, negative one half. Well, this is a tan question, so I can't just grab an X or a Y. If we're doing the hand trick, you guys are nice and lucky because 11 pi over six, all I have to do is take the square root of the bottom over the square root of the top, or you can flip your hand and do the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. But really, it's just the square root of your sine over the square root of your cosine. If you're using your coordinate points, it's, it's pretty easy too. You take your numerator of your y over your numerator of your x. It's that simple. So tan is y over x, and I went ahead and did the actual full fraction, but I'm gonna prove to you that we just ended up with the numerator of the y over the numerator of the x. Look at that. All right. Because um, I have brought over my coordinate point from the quadrant, my negative and positives are already brought over. If I was just using my first quadrant memorization, then I would have to remember that 11 pi over 6 is in quadrant 4. Go ahead and go to all students take calculus. I get that. All students take calculus and... Um, recognize that in the fourth quadrant, only cosine is positive, so tangent must be negative. Moving on to the last couple of questions, use a calculator to evol evaluate the trigonometric function. So let's say you had to evaluate trig and you have no other way, 130 degrees, I need to calculate it using a calculator. That one we could do by hand, but let's say we needed to use the information for a real world problem. Well, you gotta throw that into a calculator, make sure that you're in degrees or radians, depending on what it asks, confirm your answer. But some of you, are still struggling, ah, sorry about that. Some of you are still struggling to remember that when you're online, you have access to calculators, guys. So I've posted all sorts of different places you can download or go online or help yourself with a calculator. So you can confirm your answer, tan of 130 degrees, not radians. Let's do one more. Again, you're practicing your own calculator so that at home, you know how to convert degrees to radians, radians to degrees, depending on which calculator you're using and which one you're comfortable with. So I plug in cosine of 3 pi over 5. Again, those handy dandy calculator, and this is my answer. This part of this is just to confirm that you're getting the same answers I'm getting because then you know that you're using degrees versus radians in your calculator correctly. That's all I've got for you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.